we need to talk about this and some other important questions. But before that, let's go and grab a beer. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. And we have a gusher, nice. So I do videos here on YouTube about beer and brewing, yes. Stupid experiments, trying to learn as I go with you. So if that's your cup of tea, tag along in this series. This is the third part, the thir third episode of Ask the Doctor, where I try to answer some of your questions from older videos. And one of those questions is about my water. Don't pick at my pin code. Cheers. This is from an older video. I did bread versus alias. This is from Dan Kelly. For some reason online, it says that baker yeast is no good for making beer that has a decent alcohol content. Where I grew up, people have been using baker's yeast to brew beer for hundreds of years. This is an interesting question because I don't think they really have been so spread as people think of it. Because people have been like reusing their own yeast for, for brewing beer and taking care of that yeast. In some beer styles like the Finnish Sati or the Swedish beer style Gotlands Dricka. There's like this newborn rumor going on that they have always been brewed with beer yeast, but people were using what we call kvike, which is farmhouse yeast, right? Or yeast blends. It's not, weren't just like in Norwegian, it was spread all over the place that people had their own yeast but when bread yeast got uh, available to buy at the store people got lazy and stopped taking care of the yeast so i don't think they they have been brewing with like bread yeast for a couple hundred years they probably had their own yeast but they got lazy and started brewing with bread yeast how much alcohol bread yeast can tolerate i'm not sure and is there only one sort of bread yeast probably not can't really help you with that because I haven't tried to brew really strong beers with bread yeast. I don't brew st super strong beers anyways. But I have done a lot of like bread versus ale yeast or baker's yeast versus ale yeast in both baking and in beer. So I will link down below to that playlist. Next question. Cheers. Comes from Jason Hoflisch. Sorry, I have a question for you, Dr. Hans. Do you have a cross the board favorite hop that you like to use in multiple styles? Love your videos and love your channel. Thank you. Mm, hard. <sniffs> Oof. That was a hard question, but one cool hop is Mandarin Bavaria. High in alpha acid, quite high at least. So you can use it as bittering hops. Also, if you use, uh, use a lot of it in the late end of the boil or like in uh, steeping, you can get some really like fruity flavorful beers so uh, I've used that in lagers I've used it in Kölsch I've used it in uh, like American Pale Ale but then I really used a lot so uh, it's a cool hop hard to just pick one this is from Rocky Campbell just a question can hops grow from just roots my dog dug up one of my hop plants is it possible for it to restart? Hops, first off, can actually be harmful for, for dogs. Not for deers, but for, for dogs. I have a lot of deers here. I don't have a dog. To answer your question, yes. It's called hop risons. You, you can buy hop risons or you can like cut a, a root in, uh, in half and share it with a friend or like do cloning that way. So yes. Hops can grow from just the root. On to the next question. I love the Swedish flag thumbs up. Yes, thank you. Hit this video like. Love it. You should make it into a sticker. Mainly so I can slap it on my back window of my Volvos. Yes, that's plural. Nice. Couple of Volvos. I never owned a Volvo. My first car was a Saab. It was Swedish made back then. Oh, this was a long one. Thanks for the response on how to deal with the PSI drop. We talked about that in Ask Doctor number two. When you ferment under pressure and uh, when you 
chill your beer down, the, uh, the pressure will go down. But check the uh, video for that. Link down below to the... Uh, I can link to this playlist maybe. You can go and check it out. I'm just dwelling into pressurized fermentation and I, and I think I may have overcarbonated by putting the beer on gas in the kiser. You could do that, of course. I'm still very confused about using a spanning valve for dialing in carbonation. Use my calculator. It's, uh, it's on my website. Would it set a spanning valve at, say, 25 PSI only keep the headspace pressurized at that level rather than fully carbonate the beer? Let's take an example of priming a flat cake with sugar. Say you dose it with 5 oz of dextrose, which is 2.6 volumes per calculator, no spawning valve. Wouldn't the headspace exceed the equilibrium's pressure of 25 psi while priming before equilibrium it was reached? Therefore, wouldn't a spawning valve at 25 psi cause carbonation loss? If one were to cake prime, would you recommend using a spawning valve? Perhaps cake priming is different than spawning during active fermentation because so much more CO2 is produced. So maybe spawn it trying to capture CO2 from active carbonation, but don't spawn it kept priming with sugars. Ooh. That's a lot. You are overcomplicating it. You could actually just throw in how much sugar you want in that cake and just set the, uh, the spanning valve to your desired carbonation level, which works with temperature. That is the more exact way to do it. It doesn't matter if it's with sugars after or it's during active fermentation. But if you want a higher level carbonation and add more sugars to that and set your spanning valve with not as great pressure as needed, with the temperature in mind, you of course will lose carbonation. But I would, if I had the possibility, even if I were to do like cake sugar priming, I would use a spanning valve because that would not be like calculated by chance, like with sugar, the same way. This would be more the most accurate way to dial in the uh, correct CO2 volumes in your beer. Use the calculator. Link down below to the calculator video. This is really interesting from Patrick Glaser. I can't drink in the sun gets light struck too fast. Today I put myself in the shade here, but I've never have okay i live in 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 sweden outside of stockholm in the forest but i never had a beer been light struck in the glass i really want to do some like light struck <sighs> skunky videos but never had it happen to me maybe it depends on where you live maybe we have a little bit further to the sun here let me here, what do you, what, have you any thoughts about this? Had just your beer get light struck in the sun? And of course, also depends on how sensitive you are against beer getting light struck, but it's probably a difference, I think, because I never noticed it. Let me know. This is from David William. Hi doctor, can you make oxidization with your own pet bottles with and without vitamin C? I heard that this stuff is used in the industry to prevent oxidation in food. Yes, you are talking about ascorbic acid that works really well. I can say straight away for hoppy beers. Uh, you can add 0.1 gram per liter and you can add it like while you pitch your yeast. I can do those experiments, of course could be really interesting, so uh, thank you for the suggestion. This is from Diana Cruz. For those of us who are new into lager brewing, do you have any tips about pressurized fermentation of lagers? I personally haven't taken the leap yet and have been brewing for quite a long time now, since about 208 all grain. One thing to consider for all beers is don't pitch too little yeast. It's better to pitch more than less. I would say for ales, we're fermenting hot, one gram per liter. For lagers, if we're fermenting cold, two grams per liter for pitching dry yeast. And of course, if you're gonna ferment the, the lager hot, you don't need to use that amount of yeast. You could go with the ale rate. If you're fermenting lagers under pressure and you're fermenting them a little bit hotter, then you don't really get any like sulfur. So that means that lagering time will go down because sulfur are produced when cold fermenting the beer. If you want sulfur in your beer, I like that taste, I would still ferment it cold. Fermenting under pressure does not 
only mean that you can ferment super fast. It's also very good to keep oxygen out that way and easy transferring and natural carb beer and all of that goodies. Also when you ferment lagers, if you don't do like really hoppy beers, you could start even to think about like hot side aeration and, and, and that kind of stuff. There you could like lose some of like the malt flavors that could strip your beer. Otherwise than that, maybe go and check out some of my lager videos. I have experimented with like five day lager, even a three day lager, but that was extreme. So I did, did everything, I planned that to really like speed up the process. I shipped two of those beer out with some Swedish candy to two of my British friends. So you can go and check it out. Really nice video, we'll link down to that one below. But don't do what I do here. Learn from my videos. Don't try to replicate my, my madness. This is from Maestro PDX. Why does your sanitizer look like dirty toilet water? Asking for a friend. Well, tell your friend that he can go and... This is my water. It doesn't look this bad, but you can see what's left behind. Like, there's a lot of iron and uh, calcium in my water. So this is a real problem for me. But I do have a solution coming up for that. My sanitizer will get like murky and uh, sometimes my water can almost be like red from that amount of iron in it. You can see that in some of my brewing videos. sanitizer there is this old myth that w when the sanitizer goes cloudy it's you should throw it away then I can never ever use sanitizer if that would have been the case sanitizer sanitizes with a low pH it has nothing to do with it being cloudy or not cloudy so that's yes the yes so I have my own well so I have my own water and the water is extremely rich in in minerals which sounds a little bit better so causes a problem like in the uh, shower area and, and, and stuff like that but drinking water who drinks water anyways if you haven't checked out how to brew a three-day lager you can go and check out that video or maybe this video will fit you better <sighs> hello